Um, now we look at, at least try to give you a brief idea about what the protocol layers and the channel mapping in, in eNode B are. So these are your, uh, your uh, protocol layers in your eNode B and we start from the very top. So you, you either have the radio resource control which is in the control plane or you have the data followed from the top going down to the uh, packet data convergence protocol, then we have the uh, radio link control, medium access control, and physical. So these are your layers actually that are present in your uh, E node B and the UE, and this is kind of typically called layer one, which is your physical, and the R and the RRC level is actually called layer three by your radio people. Obviously, networking people layer three is something totally different. is is the networking layer, um, and this entire <coughs> everything else in the middle are, is actually called just just kind of layer two. So so you end up having layer two going all the way from the MAC to the PDCP level. Uh, but that's that's the lingo that the radio people talk about. Uh, we core network people when we talk about it is for us layer one is physical layer two is mac and then every and then we kind of kind of tend to ignore this this thing over here and we go into layer three being ip layer anyway so let's not confuse uh, confuse all of you up. Um, now the uh, the layers kind of uh, provide channels to uh, or, or interfaces to the layer above them in something which is called um, the, uh, the the channel that the Mac provides to the RL to the RLC is called the logical channel, and then the physical layer provides kind of interface to the Mac layer by something called the trans the transport channel, and it it finally transmits messages on the physical channel. We won't look at the transport channels or try to figure out what these transport channels are uh, for if you're not really into the physical layer those are not very important and, and for our understanding we'll focus on the logical channels and on the physical channel all right so now we look at the rrc layer and if you do look at the rrc layer you try to create what are the different types of messages that that the RRC or the data layer provides, and they can be categorized based on also what's called the, the radio bearers, and and then you have the, the different kinds of control signaling that is also provided. So we have covered in the previous lectures, I mean, kind of the some categorizations of signaling radio bearer zero, signaling radio bearer one, and signaling radio bearer two. So these are the three control channels that are three different categories into which messages are put for the control messages coming from RRC and then you have the the multiple data radio bearer so some logical separation of data on which should be given different treatments or should be tr treated differently by the radio levers so you you can have multiple data radio bearers data radio bearer one two and so on typically if you're just doing internet and and, and in most of the cases you end up just having one data radio bearer which carries all your ip traffic um, it's only when you're doing things like voice over ip where you need to send voice which should be given higher treatment and should be given um, uh, should, should, be, should be given priority over your basic internet that's when you may end up having more than one data radio bearer allocated to you uh, but in most ca cases you end up with one data radio bearer so now we start from the the very left and we'll go to the right so the paging oh okay before we get get to how these various categories of information are handled just a little bit of an overview of the um, of the MAC layer and the functionality that the MAC layer provides. So what the MAC layer provides, it provides priority handling of, uh, of, of priority both across uh, mobiles and also across the different messages that come into to the base station with the signaling messages getting more higher priority, for example, than, than the, uh, the data messages that need to be sent. It does scheduling. Uh, this is the most important uh, 
uh, functionality that the Mac layer provides. So it will schedule the information onto the physical data, the, the PDSCH in, in the right way. Uh, it also will do multiplexing and we will see an example of multiplexing. So it can take packets coming from, um, from different uh, radio bearers or different logical channels and, and build it into one uh, Mac uh, layer. And it performs a function called hybrid ARQ, which is a hybrid automatic repeat request. Um, we won't go into the details of hybrid uh, automatic re repeat request, but just at a high level, this is something in ARQ, you're, you're essentially telling the sender, hey, I have received packet number one, send me packet number two, send me packet, I've received packet number three, you can send me packet number four, or if you have a window-based flow control, the sender sends packet one to seven, waits for an ACK for seven, and then it'll send packets eight to 15. Um, ARQ is slightly different. It's kind of more intelligent in the sense that it can decode some message and just ask you for a part of the message. So it's kind of you, 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 it's kind of when you say, "Hey, I didn't get what did you say in the middle? I got the first letter and I got the last letter of that four-letter word, but what the heck did you say in that middle?" So that is hybrid ARQ. Is that you don't need to retransmit the entire message, but just a just a part of the message, and you can you can figure out what was being said. Now, having just taken a brief overview of, of the MAC layer, we start looking at how these various categories of information that are being provided from the um, RRC or the data layer are treated by these various other layers. So if you have a page message, it just skips your PDCP layer. It goes straight into the RLC layer. It also uses something what's called the transparent mode of the RLC layer, which to all of us means it RLC layer essentially does nothing other than buffering the, the, the page message. Um, the reason it does buffering is that the way the standards have been written is that the RLC layer only provides a message to the MAC layer when the MAC layer says, hey, send me, give me, give me any message that you have. And so you need to buffer the message until the right subframe in which this page message would go on. So, so that's a transparent mode. RLC, which essentially is RLC is not doing any uh, anything other than just storing the packet, sending it forward. The page message is sent on the paging con uh, the paging control channel, uh, which is the logical channel, which is which is provided. And as we had looked at the previous slide, the message is actually sent in the PDSCH in the physical downlink shared channel, and the identity used to find out whether this information is actually a page message is PRNTI. So now here we kind of show to you the structure in the downlink channel that we had looked at and this is I think for a three megahertz these are 15 resource blocks for a three megahertz downlink channel. So uh, so your PRNTI will be provided over here and that will point the mobile and say here is your page message. So that's how the page message is, is kind of transmitted. Um, Downlink, when we look at the, the uh, master information block and the system information block, these again kind of bypass the PDCP level. It doesn't provide anything. Again, on the RLC, there is only buffering. The, uh, the logical channel that Mac kind of says treats these messages coming down into is the broadcast control channel. But if you look at the physical layer, in the physical layer, the MIB is sent in the broadcast, physical broadcast channel, whereas your SIB messages, your system information block messages, are actually sent in your physical downlink shared channel. So your SIB message is, is sitting over here, and then in order to find out where the SIB message is, that is where your pointer is sitting, and the ID over here is your ID of system. So system a radio network temporary identity which we kind of said were FFFF so that's how the mobile knows that uh, where the uh, SIB information is uh, the SIB informations have various different frequencies at which they are they are sent and we will we'll look at it uh, in the next slide a bit the RRC has three different categories for messages 
an SRB0 category, the, uh, the the signaling resource bearer zero contains actually the one of the most important but a very short message which is used in, in setting up of the RRC which is your RRC uh, connection setup. Uh, this is again uh, going through RLC is actually doing nothing about it, no adding, no headers or anything, just buffering and it provides down to the uh, MAC layer through the common control channel which is the logical channel that is provided uh, by the MAC to RLC and, and it has a logical channel ID which is LCID 0 which is what the MAC adds to it. It sends this message down in the PDSC edge so you have, uh, should try to use different colors I guess, you have your SIB 0 over here. Here is your message for SIB 0, your RRC connection setup and the identity which is going to be used is something called the temporary uh, cell radio network temporary identity and the reason it's temporary is that this will become the UE's identity once the random access procedure has been successful. So now we look at the very next um, uh, the, the signaling radio bearer 1. The signaling radio bearer 1 is the first of these uh, logical uh, radio bearers that are using the PDCP level and what is a PDCP level? What, what kind of function is a PDCP level doing? It is able to give sequence numbers to packets and then for the signaling radio bearers it's doing integrity protection so it kind of puts in a few um, uh, signature at the end which actually uh, will tell the UE if something has been modified over the air and this is in case somebody else there's a bad guy in the middle who or, or a fake base station that that modifies the message and sends it to, to, to the mobile so it does integrity protection and it also performs encryption and it's interesting to see that at the PDCP level the integrity protection is done before encryption which is slightly which, which is very different from the way um, uh, the network access level does it and we will uh, it does it in the opposite order and we will look at it in the security lectures um, but that's ex essentially what the PDCP level is doing it's putting a sequence number and then clean this up so it's putting a sequence number to to the packet and then it takes the packet uh, which is uh, the, the this data packet that is coming in from uh, from the uh, RRC level, it'll go ahead and do an integrity protection at it and add the the uh, <clears throat> the MAC, which is the which is the integrity check for for this message, uh, which is which is uh, um, essentially four octets long or four bytes long, and then it takes the this entire thing over here and goes ahead and ciphers the message. So it then, then it does encryption and that is how it kind of takes this and sends it down to the next level which is the uh, RLC level and the RLC level, the, the functionality that the RLC level provides is that it does segmentation, um, it will also provide something, uh, a functionality for acknowledged mode transmission. So, so it makes sure that uh, this these signaling messages actually do make it to the other side and it'll do retransmission in case a message is not received. So these are the two important kind of functionality that is provided by the RLC level. Um, segmentation though is uh, just, just as a kind of brief overview of segmentation is how what it does is it takes the various messages coming from from uh, the layer above and only on messages that are coming on these ones that it will do concatenation or segmentation. So th this segmentation is typically not uh, very much used in the signaling SRB1 but sometimes SRB2 which carries NAS messages also which can be fairly long they can get segmented, segmented so that they are provided in the right size to the uh, to the MAC layer. So segmentation shown on the left over here is that these are actually messages kind of coming in from from the 
on that particular channel um, from the above layer and it will go ahead and based on the size that is being requested to be provided by the Mac layer go ahead and, and combine uh, break up some of these messages and combine them into the right size of what's called the uh, the radio link control packet data unit the stuff that comes from the top layer level is called the service data unit and this is just acronyms with the radio guys love to create so uh, basically this is an RLC packet which has been uh, concatenated and segmented in in some cases and sent to the other side obviously on the other side based on the header uh, and information in the he header the uh, the receiving UE will take it and break it into uh, and create the right RLC um, SDUs and then provide those up on the other side to your PDCP level to kind of do its processing so what goes down in this way essentially will on the UE kind of of course goes down all the way in this way will go up in processing in the in the other direction at the mobile okay having looked at what the RLC does now this message that has been um, sent by on SRB1 signal and radio bearer 1 is given logical channel ID 1 and the um, the messages that are sent on SRB2 are provided logical channel ID 2 and then they're basically sent down to to the uh, to the Mac layer for for multiplexing before we get to multiplexing and show how multiplexing works let's just look at the data radio bearers so the functionality provided by PDCP is it does provide a sequence number and for your IP packets that are coming here your data radio bearers the sequence numbers are larger than what what are typically used for signaling messages which are not that many you you have many more uh, data packets that come in the functionality that pdcp provides for ip packets is also something called robust header compression so rock so this is not like a rock music but this is your uh, your robust uh, header compression and it basically is a process by which the IP header can be reduced in size from 40 bytes which are which is your IP header which is 40 bytes long and a lot of times by uh, by doing robust header compression you can break that down to essentially two or three bytes at the maximum so that that's what the, the functionality of robust header compression and PDCP also provides a functionality of encryption and and it goes ahead and and it will encrypt the entire packet as we had seen uh, for the signaling packet the important thing to see is that for the data uh, plane it doesn't do any integrity protection so your your ip traffic that is sent is encrypted over the air in most cases unless you are in china and cmcc doesn't do encryption of your packet so uh, but most other operators in the world will encrypt your packet and send it over the air and you can decrypt it and uh, and listen to it on the on the other side um, once you come in from the PDCP level uh, to the RLC layer for your data radio bearers it's it's doing segmentation which we had looked at, at the, on the other side the, um, the the mode that tip is that is typically used for your IP packets is actually unacknowledged mode so so the way RLC and the radio treats it it says okay I'll send the packet if it's an error it, it, it'll get dropped on the received side but heck I mean at the IP level will go ahead or your application will if it is important it will go ahead send it if it's kind of voice there's no point retransmitting it because you've moved on you've, you've, you've said what you wanted to send move on so there is no point in in sending sending back the, the the packet to the other side so typically unacknowledged mode is used in the downlink direction for uh, for data radio bearers and here the logical channel IDs the the okay the channel the logical channel which these uh, DRBs are sent are called uh, dedicate uh, dedi uh, dedicated traffic channel so DTCH so that's what DTCH stands for is dedicated traffic channel 
um, your SRB, uh, SRB1 and 2 were being sent on your dedicated control channel. So these are logical channels that are being provided. The LCIDs are actually what you will see um, uh, on, on your uh, packets that are coming out here. All this CCCH, DCCH is, is, is just kind of logical names that are used uh, to try to understand how this processing is being done uh, in the base station and also on the other side at the UE. So each of these uh, PDCP level works actually there is a separate PDCP entity for each radio bearer so for signaling radio bearers you have it so there is a separate PDCP identity for each of your DRBs and similarly there are there are separate RLC identities also for each of your DRBs so the sequence number that PDCP provides over here is very different than the sequence is independent of the sequence numbers that are being provided for each of these so each of these uh, PDCP RLC units are, are actually kind of independent of each other and and one per data radio bearers. Now once these packets, so any segmentation that is done is only done for example on IP packets which are for we said for internet and any segmentation which will be done will be for segmentation and, and concatenation will be for voice packets and they will not concatenate packets of DRB1 and DRB2 together. They are, they are separate entities, uh, separate logical functioning that is being provided. But when we come to MAC, MAC is able to go ahead and multiplex across these, uh, across these uh, radio bearers and logical channels. And, uh, and it goes ahead and the way that concatenation is done is kind of shown on the left hand side is that it adds the LCID and it can concatenate multiple of them and we are showing kind of five uh, MAC packets being, uh, being concatenated together into a MAC SDU and it puts all the LCIDs in the first part of it, LCID values which are here and then followed by what is there in the, uh, in the, the, the actual MAC, in the actual packets that have been received from, from the top. Um, what can be put in the MAC packet or there can be some MAC level control information or there can be packets that are coming in from LCID2 and for example LCID3. So these are these can be all concatenated into together into what's called a MAC PDU. So your MAC PDU looks something like this and once it gets concatenated it will then get sent over the air and for example here it's being said is sent in the PDSCH so somewhere over here for example these three four resource blocks are allocated to UE number one and the UE number one will figure out that all of these are allocated to it by looking at, at its CRNTI over here so it goes in finds out in the DCI if it's CRNTI is there and then it looks at the pointer and finds out that all this information that is coming down to it is actually this MAC PDU. So this is, my friends, the overall structure of how the various protocol layers uh, look like and the functionality that they provide in the downlink level. Uh, the important point that we did see was that the PDCP entities and the RLC entities are independent for each of these uh, uh, radio bearers and, and there are multiple of them depending upon how many data radio bearers that, that you're having. 